welcome back to another video and today I want to go over some averages with you guys because I've been getting some sentiment from you know friends acquaintances whatever that they just say you know what I just want to be average or even uh, with the social unrest and stuff that's going on there's a lot of people that are complaining about certain averages that you know this race makes more than that race this may you know gender makes more than that gender and I just want to talk to you guys about averages and just give you guys some examples of certain averages and why an average life is not desirable why an average level of work is not desirable i want to break down for you basically what americans expect out of life versus what is average to get out of life and why americans basically what happens is uh we get out of high school and we pretty much forget how to do basic math we forget how to do um, basic addition and subtraction we don't account for things that are going to pop up in our life. So today we're going to see exactly what that average life looks like. If you're an average person, what on average happens to you? But before we get started, make sure you hit that thumbs up button because this took a lot of time for me to put together. It took a lot of math for me to put together and it's going to take a lot of time for me to edit. So anyways, first I want to share with you guys a couple averages. Like for example, one average that I saw that was very interesting to me was that um, the average male, for example, is 5'9". The average male weight is 196 pounds. So that means that the average male is overweight. The average female height is 5'3". The average female weight is 168 pounds. Therefore, the average female in America, both of these, is obese. So just to get it kicked off with one of those averages. So if you want to be average as a female, you're basically saying that you want to be obese, which Say what you will about body positivity, but coming from the medical profession, there's something to be said about quality of life, health-wise, and just your self-esteem in general. So if you're wanting to live an average life, here are some of those averages. So let's just go ahead and get right into this. So average salary is 56000 Like we said before, that one can vary by gender, it can vary by age, it varies by a lot of different factors that have to do with your socioeconomic status. Anyways, the taxes on average is a 20% tax rate, so that's going to be eleven k taken off of that already. We're taking the median mortgage because we don't want to take into account these huge houses, so we went with the median here. $1,500 per month is the median. $18,000 per year is the, is the median house payment. Average car payment, $550 per month. So if we're going with average, average car payment, $550 per month or $6,600 per year. What are we left over with? It's not looking too bad. It's looking like, okay, so $20,400. So it's not looking bad. I mean, we got a house, we've got a car, you know, we, we, we haven't eaten yet. We haven't paid our utilities. We haven't done a lot of things. So let's get deeper. All right. So we started out with 20,400 after the last round of expenses. So let's go on to food, because we want to eat. I mean, you are alive out there watching this video, so I assume that you ate at some point within the last couple days, weeks, whatever. Average expense for an American is $151 per week or $7,850 per year. The average phone, which you may be watching this on right now, or you may want to communicate with somebody at some point, so that's $70 per month or $840 per year. Average internet is 66 per month or 800 per year, which I assume you're watching this on the internet. And the average utilities, this is only factoring in electric bills. This is not factoring in garbage or water because who needs water, right? $111 per year or 1,332. So I'm assuming that you need electricity and internet unless you're watching this at the library, which I mean, I don't know how you would get into a library during COVID-19, but anyways, let's see what we got here. All right, yeah, we've got dollar sign 9580 left. So that's not all we need. I mean, we have a roof over our head, we've got the phone, we've got the food. 
Uh, we've got, I mean, that's generally what we need, but come on, we want the American dream. We want to live average, but if we're going to live average, we have to do what the American, average American does. So let's keep going. All right, so we've got our dollar sign 9580 left over and we've got a kid. The average American household has more than one kid, but I'm only gonna give you one kid because we don't wanna get too deep into this. So we're just gonna give you one kid. One kid on average costs 234K for 17 years. So for one year, it's gonna cost you $13,760. And then we wanted to go to college. I mean, that's what the average American does nowadays. More Americans are going to college than not. So we're going to go ahead and either pay for this. This is the average student debt payment, but we can consider that cash, you know, whether we paid for it before um, or whether we, you know, paid for it in some other way. The average payment here is $380 or $4,560 per month. And that is going to bring our grand total over here to 8000 740 so we have to get out a new marker here because look what just happened we went into the negative so that's just playing for school we haven't even talked about retirement we haven't talked about a lot of other things so let's go ahead and get a little deeper All right, some more pretty essential things. So we've got average health insurance. We wanna be insured, of course, even with the affordable insurance, we are gonna be paying about $400 per year. And that's not counting you know, deductibles. What if something actually bad happens? We'll get to that in the emergencies, which would be later. Average life insurance over here is $815 per year. Average car insurance, because I assume that you wanna have a car. I mean, you don't wanna just be, you know, walking around everywhere, having to walk everywhere. So let's say that you have a car, you have car insurance, that's gonna be $960 per year. And then if you want to drive that car, you got to put some gas in it. So that's gonna be $950 per year. That's gonna bring your total down here. We gotta pull out the red pin again to $20,050. All right, my mistake, that should have been $12,050 in the last one. So anyways, let's get right into this. We've got entertainment, clothes, miscellaneous, birthday gifts, birthday parties. If we've got our kid, we've gotta have Christmas, we gotta have some gifts. So we're just gonna call that $300 per month so that we can go to the movies, so that we can, you know, eat out every once in a while, so that we can enjoy our life, buy gifts, you know, maybe we might have some one-time expenses, things like that. That's going to be $300 per month, $3,600 a year. Pets, that's going to be, if you want pets, if you, you know, America loves their dogs, their cats, $60 per month or $720 per year. College savings plan. So the way that I came to this 2,900 number, this is if you assume that you get an 8% return, which a lot of the 529 plans don't get that. And that's assuming that you started at age zero. So as soon as your child is born, you'd have to put in $2,900 per year to achieve 106K. So what's the 106K? Basically the 106K is how much it costs to send your kid to college for uh, four years. So, or it should be 104, excuse me. 104. So that's assuming that public colleges all in cost about $26,000 to go to per year. So you'd have to put in $2,900 per year. So let's see what our grand total is looking like right now. That's going to be Negative $19,270. So we've got the college savings plan in place. We've got the pets. We've got the entertainment. You know, we're having a little bit of a better life. This is the life that people tend to want to live. They want to send their kids to college. They want to have some entertainment. They want to go out sometimes. They want to be able to buy their kids gifts. But it gets deeper, so let's keep on going. So it gets deeper. So let's talk about uh, charitable donations. So a lot of these people that come at me with the whole 
notion of, you know, if you only care about money, you are basically an asshole. Obviously, they've got to be doing something for their community. So let's go ahead and slap people with a $100 donation per month because they're probably doing something for their church, their, their community, something. So that's about $1,200 per year. And then we're just going to make this very conservative, just the Dave Ramsey method right here, $1,000 per year in uh, emergencies. Let's say that only a $1,000 emergency comes up every year in your life from now until you know your retirement which is probably not the case i mean if something significant breaks down in your car it's probably going to cost you more than a thousand dollars but we'll just be nice and say a thousand dollars and then that puts you in the hole twenty one thousand dollars four hundred and seventy so it gets deeper let's keep going Alright, so let me take you through this one. So this one we've got, we started out with our salary of 56000 We ended up with a deficiency so far with we bought food and we bought all those other things. We did the gifts, we did all that good stuff that Americans do. We got a $21,470 deficiency. So this 77470 is what we like to live on, right? So that's what we like to live on that's covering all the emergencies everything so what we can do is use the rule of 25 over here so if we use the rule of 25 multiply this by 25 in order to withdraw this at four uh, percent at a four percent rate we'd need to have one million nine hundred thirty six thousand seven hundred fifty dollars realistically speaking um, if we were to take out that amount out of a retirement account, assuming that we didn't do it completely tax efficiently, if we did it at a 20% tax rate, we'd actually get $1.5 million. So this doesn't completely apply. So really these numbers are probably a little bit under as they all have been a little bit under. But anyways, yeah. So if the average American begins retiring, excuse me, the average American begins contributing to retirement at age 31, in order for them to make it to this retirement goal, which is probably an undershoot, by the way, they would have to start saving $18,700 per month at an 8% rate of return. And that, if you add that as an expense into what their budget already is, you get $40,170 that we are in the hole. So we're probably done about now. We've, we've gone ourselves to college. We've you know taken the kids to college. What else could possibly go wrong? It gets deeper, so let's keep going. All right, so let's talk about what's going on here. So let's keep in mind that we're talking about averages. So the average 60 year old has 172K saved in retirement savings. So that means that if they were to live off that for 20 years, they could pull out 8.5K per year. That's just 172 divided by 20. So poverty, abject poverty is $17,760. So you don't wanna live, you don't wanna have your you know, relatives, you have your parents living in abject poverty. You don't wanna have your mother-in-law, father-in-law living in abject poverty. So we just, we're just gonna assume that you support just one of them. Even though on average, you would have to support all four of them, you know, Assuming that they all make it to 60, you could have four of these expenses, which would be $4,260 per parent. But we're just going to give you one, and that puts you down here to $44,430 in the hole. So we got to be done now, right? No, it gets a little deeper than that. So we got to go a little bit deeper in the hole. So let's keep going. All right, here we go again. Americans love their vacations. Not quite right now because of the COVID-19 situation, but we're already at negative $44,430 and the average vacation for one is $1,200 per person. So if you want to take your family of four that we're slapping on you in this situation, that's gonna bring you down even further into the hole of $49,230. So at this point, we've got all of the vacations. We got all of you know the things that Americans typically do. So this is the amount above 56,000 that you would need to make. So yeah, it's already looking pretty bad here. We've got 
negative 49,000, which if we just round that up to 50K and we say that we started with 56,000 at the top, we basically needed to make that 56,000 plus 50K. So we needed to make $106,000 to do all of these things. And that's just to have absolutely nothing left over that after that, that we're not talking about savings. We're not talking about building up an emergency fund. We're not talking about any of that other stuff that maybe we want to do. We're not talking about getting a second home. We're not talking about anything besides just surviving and getting by. That's 106K based off of this budget, but it gets a little deeper than that. So let's get into the next thing. All right, I'm not sure what you guys can see here, but basically what we've got here is we've got the ladders of society here. So we've got over in the net, we're calling this a net worth. So the 10 million net worth, we're just gonna say that these are the way more than enough. Okay, these people have way more than enough to sustain. This is 10 million plus. So if you look way off the board, you know, you got billionaires way up there. And we've got the 1 million in net worth plus right here in this area. There's still way more than enough. Okay, they're good. They've got probably, you know, if they wanted to, they've got anywhere between two to five years that they could survive off of just their money. You've got the 100K, which is more than enough. You know, they've probably got maybe six, maybe a year saved up of expenses. And you've got the just enough, the people who are kind of just getting by. They've got a little bit of a savings account. Maybe they still have some debt. And then you've got less than enough. You've got people that, you know, millennials that just graduated from college. You've got all kinds of people. You've got people who just are in debt for other reasons, whatever. And then you've got poverty slash homeless. These people have nothing. So let's talk about good times and let's talk about bad times. So in good times, what you see in America is these people want to live like these people. 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 And so on and so forth. And what ends up happening is that everybody tries to live up when there's good times. So what happens in bad times? What happens in bad times is everybody gets knocked down a little notch. So as you can see right here, if you're at the just enough, you're gonna get knocked down underneath this water to less than enough. If you're at the more than enough, you're probably gonna get knocked down a rung to just enough. Maybe you have to sell some of your stuff to these people who are at still way more than enough or way more than enough you're probably gonna have to sell some stuff to them. If you're at this just enough, you're gonna go underwater down to less than enough, and you're probably gonna have to take out debt from someone in the still way more than enough, or way more than enough, right? You're gonna have to take out debt from those people. These people, they were kinda already underwater anyways, but these people down here that are already underwater are gonna have less of an easy time getting money from any of these people up here. Everybody gets knocked down a little bit of a, uh, uh, wrong every time there's economic uncertainty there's an economic bad time so that's uh basically the synopsis of why average is not enough so got to think about good times we got to think about bad times we got to think about all of those expenses that brought us up to 106k and is 106k really enough or should you go for even more than that really when it comes down to it whatever you set your mind to go out there and get you'll get a plan to go ahead and get to that point. So if you could just choose one of these ladders, if you could choose one of these positions to be on the ladder without any regard for the work, most people would choose to be up here. So once you take the whole, you know, I don't know how to get there, or it's gonna to be too much work to get there out of the equation, most people wanna be up here. So that's why average is not enough. Hopefully you guys like this video in this new style, whiteboard style. We'll have to see how it works out but anyways make sure you guys hit the links below if you guys do enjoy my videos to support the channel it really helps the channel grow and i'll see you guys in the next video